To Bingo, and I'm so lucky to to be able to welcome Stefan Crisco, my former boss, <laughs> on stage, and to give you a little bit of time to talk about your journey in raising a, raising a fund, and then we would have some some talk about that. Stefan, well, thank you, Human. It's a it's a pleasure to be here, and indeed, to uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, it's always been a pleasure to to work with you guys, and it's it's a, an incredible uh, event you've you've uh, launched here. Okay. So, um, also very happy to be able to tell a little bit about uh, the the pain, struggle, and and agony uh, that it takes to raise a venture fund. I think, as as a starting remark, I can say to all the uh, aspiring and emerging entrepreneurs and startup companies that that are going to raise money. You can always think that the venture funds you're going to approach, they have the same pain and struggle when they're going to raise their funds, and in particular to raise a first-time uh, venture fund. Uh, I embarked on this journey many years ago, and uh, I've been an investor now for uh, almost 15 years. Um, I, was, uh, I originally have a scientific background. I was operationally involved in a number of biotech companies. And back in 2007, I was part of setting up a team called Novo Seeds, which is an early stage investment and company creation team uh, affiliated with Novo Holdings, the asset management company of the Novo Nordisk Foundation. And um, I, the, the thought has sort of grown in me for, for some time that it could be really cool to, to, to be able to start uh, a new, fresh venture fund. There is a need. Uh, a real need and opportunity here in the Nordics. Uh, relatively few specialist investors, also in life science. I think the same goes especially also for green tech and sustainable investments. So uh, we saw this opportunity and I was lucky to team up with uh, a group of also experienced individuals. We set out to do this um, and it, it, it was, it's always a tremendous struggle to raise a, 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 a first-time venture fund. We had a global pandemic, as you may be aware, uh, that also hit us last year. So when we hit the first close, as it's called, when you start the fund in the summer of uh, last year, we were completely exhausted. It is the hardest thing I've ever done. And, and as I'm not a woman, I, I have not given birth to babies, but uh, I, would, I would consider it in, in that sort of category, giving birth to a venture fund. Um, but we made it. Uh, we're now operational. We do investments. Uh, and, and human, I'm happy to, to talk a little bit about, uh, first of all, the role of venture capital. Why is it important to have venture funds? Why is it important to have local venture funds? And what does it take to, uh, to raise a, a venture fund here? So yeah, um, I, I, I look forward to the, to the discussion here in the next 25 minutes or so. Fantastic. Uh, try to describe the, uh, the, the beginning of the journey. So, so what, there are a lot of people around in, in the green area and, 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 and there's a lot of love and passion within the, the, within the sustainability. So we see a lot of movement um, in, in, in people wanting to raise funds to be able to invest and push the transition. Um, but I'm not sure they know what lies in f ahead of them. So if yeah. you could just start with explaining the journey. Yeah, and, and you're right. Love and passion for what you do has to be in the foundation, right? I mean, if, if you want to just earn a lot of money, honestly, there are much easier ways to do that. So, so, so uh, love and passion is good, but of course, it's nowhere near enough to, to raise a life science venture fund uh, or a venture fund in any area. Um, now, life science happened to be what I spent my entire career uh, working in, but I, I think one element is you, you need to have experience, uh, you need to have worked in different positions in the industry, and then a, a very, very essential thing, you need to be a team. No one can do this by themselves. You need to team up with a little group of individuals who can supplement the experience you have. So in, in iVentures, we were four founding partners, we, uh, all with experience from, from the life science field, uh, but with quite different and complementary uh, uh, ways of looking at things. And I, I think that is, that is a one essential thing I would uh, stress, that people need to have a group of people whom they can work with, but who are also 
very, very importantly different from themselves. You, you shouldn't raise a fund where, where, uh, where, you're, where your team that just look like clones of the same individual. You, you, need, to be, you need to have a diverse uh, approach, but diverse in a way when it's productive. And, and then I would say it's, it's uh, yeah, what else do you need? You, you need experience. You need, the, when, you're, when you're raising a venture fund, it, it is a venture fund is investing other people's money for return, return. So, so you need to have some kind of track record that you've done this before. So I, I, it would be very hard to jump into raising a venture fund without any, any prior investment experience. All right. Um, so yeah, I, I think complementary team, track record and experience. Uh, people always want you to be uh, 30 years of age and with 40 years of experience. And, yeah. and obviously it's uh, hard to fulfill all criteria, but... Uh, you, you mentioned uh, when we talked earlier that more people have been out in the orbit than people trying to, uh, to create an early stage uh, investment within your field, right? Yes, I mean, it, it, I, I haven't quality checked the numbers, but I'm pretty sure there's about 580 uh, or 90 people that been, that's been in space. And I'm sure there's less people who succeeded raising a first-time life science venture fund in Europe. Yeah. Um, and and I, I, I think it's, it's a little bit set for fun, but obviously it's also an indication of, of the challenges in, in doing this. And I guess in, in the sustainable and, and green investment area, there are even less people who've been raising funds. Currently, there are, there are money, there's money allocated to the area, mm. but there are not that many funds that are active in the area. So it, it is a huge undertaking. Um, but I think if, if, you, if you stare too blindly on those statistics, you, it's, it's a formidable challenge. And, and that, that shouldn't... It shouldn't stop you from trying, right? You shouldn't should just scare be, you off. Yeah, yeah. It shouldn't scare you because if, if, if we look at the world in this way, everything is impossible because every, a lot of when you're reaching for the stars is difficult. So you, you need to be able to overcome that sort of difficulty. And also maybe it's an indication that you need a certain robust personality to be able to, to, to work in those circumstances, realizing it's different, but also having the sort of the ability to, to push through even when times are really, really hard. Yeah, I remember because, because I met you, uh, I think it was two years ago, uh, Take Barbecue. And, and I think what you, your comment was, uh, I'm also an entrepreneur now. And, and for most of us entrepreneurs who are usually not working with the VCs, we see VCs as a, you know, these rich people who have a lot of money and we don't see them as entrepreneur, but it, but it requires, it is the entrepreneurial, it is an entrepreneurial journey to it, raise a fund. It, it is a truly, I mean, I went a year without salary. I mean, uh, that should be uh, something that any entrepreneur, true entrepreneur can relate to. Uh, yes, no, it, it, is, uh, it is a real entrepreneurial effort to raise a first-time life science venture fund. And I think, obviously, had I, had I been partner in a big established fund, uh, um, uh, which I were, uh, but uh, where you sort of, the money is, is there and, and it's sort of uh, less of an effort to raise money, uh, maybe there wouldn't be the same entrepreneurial element. But raising a first-time life science venture fund or a first-time venture fund uh, yeah. is, is tr a truly entrepreneurial journey. And, and um, is it in this region, yeah. uh, and especially in Denmark, um, it is not so many people who kind of uh, are, 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 are going in that direction. Would it have been easier to raise a fund somewhere else, maybe London or Berlin, not to mention, of course, Silicon Valley, yeah. than it is in Denmark? And how was your journey in convincing people to join your, 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 your vision? Yeah, it's, it's a good question, Human. I, I, hard to tell, right? Because I've only been here, I've only tried it here in the Nordic region. And, and again, there's so much innovation, there's so much happening here in the Nordic region. So it's a great region to be in. Uh, and that goes both for life science, which I'm, which is my speciality, but certainly also for green technology. Um, but the general investors, and here in particular, the pension funds are very, they're, they're one, they're risk averse, and they, they have a 
sort of very negative view on, on the perspectives of venture in general. So, so yes, I think the answer to your question is it would probably have been easier in London or in Paris or uh, in the Bay Area uh, where in, investors are more aware of this uh, industry they, and they, they recognize that venture is a, a, a good asset class. Of course, a pension fund should never allocate all their money to venture, but imagine the Danish pension funds with thousands of billions of crowns under management. If they just allocated 1% to this, it could be a game changer for the, for the ecosystem. Yeah, because um, we have, we, the, the, within life science, we, we actually, life science is of course of, a part of the sustainable uh, technologies and, and, and a part of the creating a sustainable future, uh, it plays a huge role. But it's also a different one because it takes mm. uh, much longer and it's not the same as building an app. Uh, so, but if if we want to look into into uh, into the state of the status quo in Denmark, uh, it's like there are a lot of early stage um, startups lacking the first investment. Mm. That's the, the, the hardest part is the first journey. Yeah. Because when, once you've got the first one, whether it's a crowdfunding or, you, you know, once somebody has invested in you as a business angel or a first VC, then it becomes kind of easier, I guess. That's what I hear. hear. Uh, because then people have, yes. it's a proof of concept, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yes, I think you're right. To, to, but but the, I, I would argue there's also a need for sort of professional scaling capital, growth capital, as it's called, mm. in, in many sectors, not only life science. And I mean, the role of a venture fund is to look at opportunities and find the ones that has a true, you can say, global potential, where there's a scalability. Mm. Because venture capital work by investing in, in, in a portfolio of opportunities, realizing there's high risk if, when you invest in early stage opportunities, some of them will fail. But the ones who make it, they have to have this truly uh, a scalable yeah. impact, and and yes, it's it's hard for any startup to come by the first capital that allows them to sort of uh, become into existence. But I I think that both in life science, but certainly also in, in in green tech and many other areas, there are many sort of struggling companies that have raised their first funding, but they don't really get the capital they need to 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 uh, scale. To, to, grow, to scale and to grow the, the value potential they have inherently in them. Yeah, because what we see is they actually, um, some, they move out of Denmark. We see, yeah. we see a yeah. lot of those who are in the growth uh, mode, they actually kind go of either the go to the UK yeah. or to, to US, but there is um, uh, more capital. Yes, that, that is a trend. And I, I think, uh, I can't remember who made it, but there was a statistic for the last 10 unicorns that has its roots uh, in Denmark. I think it was eight of them have now moved outside the country. Mm. And, and I think the, the ability to track, attract growth capital and to be able to do the scaling is a major impact. So this is, of course, a, 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 a somewhat of, well, it's good for the companies, right? It's good for the world. The opportunities, they get the ability to, to develop their products and pursue the opportunities. It's not so good for Denmark. Mm. And it's unnecessary because the, 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 it, it indicates that the technology is actually good here. They're good people. There's, mm. there's, there's really the, the raw material that you need to build these successes exist, but they need to go outside the country to get the capital, which is unnecessary when you think about, again, I mentioned the pension funds, but the thousands of, of billions that, um, that we have here, it's not capital that is actually missing in Denmark, but it's just not being allocated to, to these, exactly. these type of opportunities. Exactly. Um, you are also chairman for, for Venture Cup. Yes. Um, and, and working with, with universities and, and, and early stage uh, technology, tech, tech transfer and all of these things, we, a um, lot have changed uh, in the past 15 years, 10, 15 years in Denmark. Um, where we, 10 years ago, there was, the talk was there's not enough money, there's not enough investment in this region. Um, but I, as I hear you say, is there is money. We just haven't figured, really figured out how to put a system, systemize it and minimize the risk. Yeah, it, it, th there is definitely money. And, and, and you can see that if you go in the property market in Copenhagen and see the crazy prices people are paying for small apartments. I mean, that's just a, a data point in this. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it's, 
the, the, and, and you're also seeing the international investors are, are becoming more aware of other opportunities in the local ecosystem. So you see big financing rounds where international investors are, pl are putting in the, the, the most of the capital. Um, you see the stock exchange in Stockholm has been a, a really, really great way for a lot of companies to attract capital. It's been the most active market in life science outside the US. So things are happening to, to address this. Of course, I am a venture capitalist. Uh, I have to point to my hat here and, and, and I are ventures, uh, pointing to the role of local venture capital because that is, is often needed to catalyze things. When I talk about the international capital that comes here, they often require a local investor uh, just to make sure that things are in compliance with the law and everything works fine and the ecosystem is connected in the right way. And, and um, again, it is this, a, a venture investor can have this um, look for opportunities which have a really scalable potential and seek out and build those in the best possible ways. And in life science, there, there, there is really only a handful of, of Nordic investors, um, aside from our ventures uh, that, that have sort of that global outreach and, and, uh, and I guess in the, in the green tech and sustain, sustainable investment area, it's, it's not much different. So I think my answer is the ecosystem is adapting and, and startups, of course, they have to, to get whatever they can to, to build their companies. So they're finding ways, but we could still do much better. Yes, definitely. Uh, just um, tell me a little bit about uh, our uh, ventures now. How big are you? What is the size? What are you doing right now? So it, it's, and that may be important to, to also talk a little bit about that. So it's a good thing you ask because we are uh, four founding partners and a principal. So, so we are five. Um, Amanda, who is our person in the US, is part time with us. So what are we? 4.2, uh, 4.5 uh, FTEs. Uh, so we are a small team. And I think you'll find that in, in many venture funds are relatively small teams. So people often think as venture investors having armies of associates yeah. that do all kinds of things. No, uh, it, it, that's, it, it is a small team that, that works on the opportunities. Um, and what do we do right now? We've done, uh, this morning actually signed on to our fifth investments. So, wow. um, so we've done five investments so far spanning from very, very early stage to, to uh, a little bit later stage where things are in the, in the patients. Uh, we are seeing a lot of opportunities. I think we've reviewed about 500 opportunities since we started. So out of um, 500, you have chosen five? Yeah. yeah. That's a tough process. That is a tough process. And I think, again, uh, most venture investors, given that there is this imbalance between the available sea of opportunities and, and, uh, and this few investors, this one to two percent success ratio is probably um, usual for most uh, yeah. most investors. I will add, we are still fundraising to bring the fund uh, to a little bit larger size. Uh, we will plan to do what's called our final close later this year, mm. uh, and we'll see where where that brings us. But hopefully, we'll be somewhere north of a hundred million euros. Um, right. So um, we are we are also addressing that uh, and. Um, uh, yeah, and then we are, like everyone else, affected by the co corona situation. So we are sitting in front of our computer all day long. I'm, I'm very happy that this is an actual event in an actual <laughs> physical place. Uh, because uh, I think it's amazing how well the world has actually adapted to this situation. Has it happened 15 years ago? Im imagine the, the yeah, chaos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but like everyone else, uh, we are also longing to be a little working together. And, and there are just something you, you can do better when you are mm. meeting people face to face. But in spite of this, we've been, done, been doing five investments and, and uh, looking at, at a couple of other ones. So. And those investments, are they uh, spread geographically or is, uh, are, are you concentrating in, in Nordic? So we, we, in our investment strategy, our, our sort of uh, focus is the Nordics and all of the investments we've done have Nordic angles. Mm. Um, but two of them actually happen to be U.S. incorporated. So even though it's built of science here, yeah. and, and that's what we talked about before, uh, great science and innovation here in the region. But if you really want to access the, the truly talented capital, yeah. you have to think, in this case, the U.S. Uh, and so, so two out of five are very much 
leaning that way. Right. Um, and the rest uh, are, are Danish and Swedish, but uh, yeah. We will also look at things from the rest of Europe, uh, but it, it will be a minor part of what we do. Uh, and, we, and we will have a, a, a preference for Nordic opportunities because, again, this is sort of what we explain to our investors is that those, there is this imbalance in the Nordics between great opportunities and very few investors. And, and indeed, this is the truth. So we have to, <laughs> we have to pursue these opportunities also. Definitely. So I would ask you, Two, I have two more questions. Yes. Um, one of them is, what is uh, there, what 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 would be your suggestions to um, to a uh, couple of professionals uh, wanting to start the the journey to create their own uh, VC within the sustainability? It doesn't really matter. But yeah, yeah. What would be the two things that you would tell them? <laughs> Remember these two. Yeah. Uh, so again, coming back to the team, right? You need to be a good team, not clones, a, a diverse team meant in the way that you have different competencies and different ways of looking at things and different sort of perspectives. Um, that's, to, I think, a, a must from the beginning. Uh, and, and I think to succeed, your, the, the, the founding team's experience must be complementary and they must include some investment experience. Mm. And then I would say one, one key advice or one, I don't know if it's a piece of advice, but it's a key thing is to get an anchor investor, uh, i.e. some investor that will say we are in with a substantial amount and with that commitment you can then hopefully get other investors on board. So, so getting an anchor investor is, is very, very important. All right. um, Stefan, I need to ask you um, anchor investment. All right. Um, so we, that's, that's, we talk to people. Some of our viewers are not uh, familiar with with, uh, with with all the uh, names and, 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 and with the with the, with the uh, industry. Yeah. So explain what is an anchor investor. An anchor investor is simply an investor that that is sticking the neck out and say I'm in, and that has to be with a fairly substantial amount. And in our case, it was actually Swedish Sum Invest which is the Swedish equivalent to, to Vexfond. Okay. And they upfront said that they committed 25 million euro, which was our anchor investor in, in sort of building the fund around. They wouldn't, yeah. I have a question when we have time. Yeah, <laughs> when you have time. <laughs> All right, cool. And um, we, we, we can actually take your question now. <laughs> Go. Hello, can you hear me? Start from the beginning, please. Yes. So you've obviously been in the pain, like many entrepreneurs, fundraising, um, but obviously for your fund. And your point earlier was on, on both sides, really both you and Human, uh, we need more growth stage capital in our country, uh, it, both in order to, to follow on in the later rounds, but also hopefully to affect that some of our scale-ups will actually decide to stay mm. in our country. Um, but what can we as a country do for someone like you who's in fundraising mode? You're actually still in fundraising mode for your final close. Um, tell us. Yeah, and, and I think, um, again, coming back to, to the access to capital, right? We have a lot of capital here. Again, I, I will mention the pension funds for now for the third time, uh, but they allocate practically zero to this sector which is sort of counterintuitive because uh, uh, if you look at the statistics from the European Investment Fund, um, on average, which, and the European Investment Fund have invested in most venture funds in Europe, actually. Without them, we wouldn't have a venture industry. They've get, uh, life science is one of their uh, best sectors, but actually across the board, they get very nice returns. On life science, on average, 14.5% uh, return. So. There's ample documentation that venture is not only philanthropy, it's actually profitable. As a, as a, as a long-term investor, and pension funds are long-term, right? They are investing for us for having some money when we retire, and, uh, and uh, that is a long-term endeavor. And, and yet they, they completely shy away from the, from the sector. So I think having, if, if I should point to one thing, would be some 
some, let's say, call it pressure or, or, or it, uh, things put in place that would make them look into allocating just a tiny fraction of their uh, um, money to this. 5,000 billion, well, how, how much? Yeah, it? yeah, I, I don't know exactly yeah. human, but I've read somewhere it's about 5,000 billion crowns. Yeah. And, and, and so if there could be some, something put in place that would allow them to invest a little bit in the sector. Of course, not only nationally. This is a global industry, so it would be a competitive thing, and and uh, and people who could uh, uh, manage this professionally, they they might not uh, be in this this country or this region. But it would make a world of a difference, and it would it would it would make this capital would be maybe instead of the unicorns leaving Denmark, maybe they would come here. Right? Imagine that. Attracting unicorns. Yeah. Ooh. With this word, these words, I would like to thank you for your participation. Thank, uh, thanks a lot, and b best of luck with your journey uh, in raising the reaching that hundred million. Yes. Euros. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much, Stefan. Thank you. Great having you. Thanks.